Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. And exciting might be a bit of an overstatement, but it is certainly going to be a useful tutorial and it comes with a free preset. And if you call now, we'll even finish the tutorial. So what we're going to be doing is using some tracking data from Mocha for After Effects and we're going to be able to do some interesting things. So what I've done is I've tracked the surface of this shot in Mocha. And now using our preset, what I can do is move this null object anywhere I want on the surface, maybe scale it down, and the result will look as if that object is touching that position. So I can move it over here, maybe scale it up, play it back, and it's locked to that position. Or I can move it right here, I can even move it off the frame, so maybe move it down and uh, scale it up as if it's closer to the camera and uh, it'll even work. So basically what our preset does is takes the corner pin data out of Mocha and extrapolates it to create a specific point position within that surface. So basically if we track the surface of the road, we can figure out any point relationship by simply moving this null object around. And it also works with rotation and even scale. So you can really do some cool stuff. And hopefully it'll save you some time and give you some flexibility once you've tracked your shot. Now we may not be blowing cars up or doing cool things like that, but with a little bit of work, we could blow this sign up at the end. So let's move on and uh, we'll start going over some different examples. So here I have our shot of New York. And so what we need to do is we need to track it in Mocha. And the way I like to do that is add it to a render queue. Uh, we'll set this to maybe a JPEG sequence at about eight, okay, okay. And choose a destination and click render. And then if we open up Mocha for After Effects, which comes with your CS4 or CS5, what we can do is create a new project and we'll import that footage that we just exported. So we'll click on that, open the image sequence, choose next, we'll overwrite this because I already did the project, and we'll set it to 23.976, which is our project uh, frame rate. Then we'll hit finish, and uh, okay. And the frames will cache themselves, and uh, while we wait, we can maybe uh, make fun of this guy right here. He's got red shorts on. What an idiot. All right, so now that that's done, we can scrub through, and at the very end, we can see this kind of bike. <sighs> Saving gas. What a jerk. All right, let's start tracking the surface of the road. So we'll come up here and take the X-Spline tool, and we'll draw a shape around the surface of the road. And then we right-click to close the shape. So then we'll come over here and we'll click track forward. And Mocha will do its thing. Now if you need to adjust your track, like if someone walks in the frame or you have more information you want to include in the tracking area, what you can do is stop it. And for example, the car is about to come into my tracking area. So we'll just bring this down a bit. And we also have some more texture over here. So let's say we enlarge the surface area here. We can zoom out a little bit and include that portion as well. And then we'll just continue the track. All right, now I know you're having a great time so far. We've got this track done of our surface and what we need to do is export this into After Effects so we can use it. So I'm gonna slide this over here and down here we have the export data and I can choose export tracking data and I can export corner pin data, or I can export specific transform data. Now, corner pin data is good if you want to add something to the surface, but transform data is good if you want to connect things to a specific point. If we choose transform data and we export that, that's good, but the problem is, instead of getting a specific point, like say right here or back here, we're actually gonna get the center of this tracking shape. So what if we wanna create a very specific point and bring that into After Effects? Well, here's what you can do. Let's say we wanna bring in a point right about here. 
Now the problem is there's nothing here to track. It's just kind of a gray area. So using Mocha, we can actually track the texture of the surface and get some information we can actually use. So even if you want to export a single point, tracking a surface will allow you to get a more accurate reading of that area. So to do that, what I'll do is create another mask that's really small right there. And then I can come over here and say link the track to my earlier layer or layer number two. And then if we take this and look at it, it stays locked to that position. And then if we come over here to export tracking data, we can choose transform data, copy to clipboard, and then in After Effects, we can create a new null object. Edit, paste, and now we have that tracking position specifically for this null object. Now we need to do one quick thing, hit U, uncheck the anchor point, and change it to zero, zero. And now that null object is right there on that position. Now something weird's happening with the scale, so I'll just shut that off. And uh, you can see that that point seems pretty well represented by that null object, even the rotation. So that's a useful way for getting a specific point out of Mocha. But what if you want to change the position of this? Well, if I move the position, say, back here, by moving all the keyframes, that point is not going to line up. See, it's floating around because the position coordinate is specific to that area right there. So what else can we do? Well, maybe if there was a tutorial with a preset called corner pen to null, but wait, there's more. Um, actually, that's exactly what we're going to do. So instead of doing that, which is a good way if you know a specific point that you need, um, but instead of doing that, I'm going to delete that, and we'll select our other one. We'll go to the very first frame here, and we'll come up here to the side, and we'll say align to surface. And that way it locks it to the first frame for the corner pin data, which you'll see in a second. And what we're going to do is export this. So we'll choose export tracking data, corner pin data, and click copy to clipboard. And then we'll come back over to After Effects, and we're going to create a new solid. And uh, we'll make it uh, pink and hit OK. Then we'll choose edit, paste. And now we have these four corner pins. We come to the effects control. We have a corner pin effect. If we hit U, we have a bunch of keyframes. And basically, this corner pin data can be used to put things onto the surface of the road. So let me show you how you would do that. First, we would choose layer, pre-compose, and we'll leave all the attributes in the working comp. So that way the corner pin stays here. And we'll call this tracking comp and hit OK. First, let's make a copy of our footage. We'll choose edit, copy, and open up that tracking comp. Double click. And then we'll choose edit, paste. Now, we just want this to be a reference, so we'll right click on it and choose guide layer. And that way it won't render in the working comp. So what we can do is take the text tool and we'll just type danger ahead and we'll scale it up a bit and maybe we'll make it a 3D layer we'll uh, hit uh, W and rotate it maybe even create a wide angle camera to match our footage and uh, the idea is we're gonna put this on the surface of the road so we'll just tweak it a bit here anyway something like that so we've added our text and it looks just like that and then if we come back to our working comp here we have our danger ahead. And as we scrub through the comp, it almost looks like that's flat on the surface. Maybe we'll change the transfer mode to overlay. We lower the opacity just a little bit or something. Um, but that looks pretty good. It's kind of on the surface. And that's what planner tracking allows you to do. It allows you to map things onto the surface. But we're actually going to be using it in a slightly different way because we want to put something into the scene but not necessarily flat on the surface. So, so let's bring our sign out into the comp because sometimes people read signs better than they read the road. You know, and if there's zombies ahead or something dangerous, you know, you want them to know. Or do you? Maybe it's a trick. Zombies may be intelligent. We don't know. We need to study them. 
I think there was a movie about that. Actually, there is a movie about that. It's got Will Smith in it, and he's like the last person on Earth, and like these zombies are getting him, and he's got to like find the cure. I think it's called Independence Day. It's a good movie. Jeff Goldblum, a lot of uh, a lot of action. All right, so we've got this sign, and we want to tie it to a position on the road. Now, if we were to go and say shut this off, go into our tracking comp and put our red pole into our shot, watch what happens. Well, first, it gets a little crazy because of the transfer mode, but if we switch it back to normal, if we look at the shot, it just becomes wildly distorted, and that's absolutely not what we want. So, we'll go in here and we'll delete that, and in our working comp, we want to create a null object. So, we'll create a new null object, and we'll come over here to our presets, and you can download the project and uh, install the preset into your effects and preset folder. We'll take it and we'll drop it onto a null object, just like that. And then in the null object effects control, we can choose the layer that has our corner pin data, because remember, our corner pin data is on this tracking comp, it's right here, it's where it came in from Mocha. So we'll come up here and we'll say, I wanna use the tracking comp and so now the null object is going to use the information from Mocha. So if we move this somewhere into position, actually it works better if you go to the first frame. If we move this into a position, we'll take our red pole and we'll move it also to the position of that null because you want those to be tied together because if the null represents the point on the surface, the red pole should be connected where the end of the pole would touch the surface. So we'll also take the anchor point of the pole and move it down to the bottom. Uh, we could just use the pan behind tool and move that around so it moves it to the center. And that way, if we scale it up and down, it'll scale around that point. Okay, so we'll unsolo it and then we'll take the pole and parent it to that null object. So now if we move this null object around, we can actually see that it's tied to the surface. So it's doing all the calculations based on that corner pin data to move it into the right position. Now, one thing that gets a little bit weird is scale and perspective because 3D perspective is a little bit different than just normal scale. So for some things, you're gonna have to cheat it. I actually hit U, go into the effects expressions and just unequal the scale so that it doesn't use the scale from the calculation. Sometimes it'll be useful, sometimes not. Or you could just delete the expression out of there. Um, but in this case, we're just gonna ignore the scale. And as we look at this, it looks pretty good. Now, I'll probably just rotate this a little bit. There we go. Then I can take the null here, maybe move it into the back, and I can scale it down, and then it's back there. Um, or I can scale it up, put it uh, right here, you know, the, the guy is driving by, he just missed the sign. And we just find that out and the zombies get him and they take all his money. Sounds like a good movie. The bottom line is the preset is simple. It just works. So, you know, I wanna thank Sergio, our developer who is a genius and uh, helped figure that one out. I mean, if we look at some of this stuff that's going on here, it looks like he's just trying to draw pictures with characters because I think I see a guy's face. I don't know. Anyway, bottom line is whatever that is, it works pretty good. Now, if I jump back over to our original comp, we can take a look. So remember, it's not 3D tracking, it's planner tracking. But when you have a little bit of parallaxing, it can really pull off some, some believable composites, you know, when you have to do 2D tracking um, for a moving shot. So works pretty good and um, I would just say if you see this many danger signs, you know, you might think about going the other way. That's all I'm saying. Um, but just to be clear, planner tracking is for putting things flat onto a surface and this corner pin to null preset allows you to move things along the surface. Now remember, you can't just put this anywhere you want and hope it'll stick there. It's relative to the planner surface or to the flat surface. So anywhere along this plane, I mean, we could put it way back here. If you wanna have a big 50 foot pole in the middle of an intersection, hey, that's your business, all right? I mean, you know, the only people that might care might be like building and code inspector type people, but hey, they're jerks anyway. So you do whatever you want 
And um, just don't say I told you it could because then that's trouble for me and I don't need that kind of trouble. Um, so we got this sign here. Um, we did say we were gonna blow it up. So let's see here, we got this dirt charge. Bring this out. Check this out, I can duplicate the null object and it's already got all the expressions and everything tied to it. So I'll take our dirt charge, move it to that position a little bit and then parent it to the null object. So now if I move this around, I can say, put the dirt charge there in the background or I can move it uh, really close here and then it's blowing up right in our face or we could put it right here on the sign. Boom, the sign blows up and um, you know, that looks amazing. Um, actually, you can also do things like this. You can take the two layers that are parented, duplicate them, and in this case, I'll put it below, and I can just take that null object, and I can move it around. So we'll put this one back here, scale it down a bit, maybe duplicate another copy, put it beneath it. You know, you could use some of your fancy education from, um, you know, drafting class to figure out vanishing points and things like that, but um, that's just too much work. Um, okay, finally, there is one last thing we need to do. And we have this danger sign, and we have this sign that says danger, but let's face it, some people can't read. So let's jump over here to the uh, tracking comp, and let's see if we can sort that out. So I'm gonna create a new black solid, and um, we'll take the paint tool here, we're gonna double click, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna set it to white, and we're just gonna start drawing. So I just wanna get the basic shape here, and then I can increase the size of the brush a bit. Just kind of fill this in. Perfect. And uh, then we'll size the brush down, and maybe make some uh, Little lines like this, perfect. And then we need to make a nice uh, shape like this, perfect. All right, so he's got a little bit of a jaw problem here. That's okay. So then we'll come back over here, we'll switch this up to black, create some evil eyes right in here, yeah. Yeah, this guy's coming to your Halloween party, and you're gonna like it. So we can use the black to, you know, make some modifications to the skull area and maybe even add a nasal cavity. Excellent, look at that, that makes a big difference. Maybe a couple of cracks or something like that. This guy's like And not that he has any blood, but you know, what the heck. This guy's like hungry for blood. Maybe it's barbecue sauce, let's not judge him. And finally, we'll add a couple of uh, crossbones here. I don't know if this is like a femur or whatever, but I just have to talk to my medical friends. Just kidding, I don't have any medical friends. I don't have any friends, but I do go to the doctor's office to talk to the medical people. All right, so we've got the skull and crossbones done. We'll come back in here. We'll set the transfer mode to screen, and um, we'll make it a 3D layer. And we'll take the position information, we'll hit U, We'll take the position, scale, orientation from our danger ahead and paste it onto our skull. So there we go. Maybe you scale it down a little bit. I mean, with a big old skull like this, we don't really need to say danger, do we? I didn't think so. Put that right there. Come back over here. I'll set this to uh, screen. Maybe lower the opacity a little bit. And uh, I say we're looking pretty good. I mean, the blood on the teeth, I think that really sells it for sure. So anyway, hey, listen, um, I'm Andrew Kramer. Check out the website, a um, lot of stuff going on. We've got the blog, we've got the form, and of course, our fantastic video co-pilot products, action essentials, optical flares, a lot of action. You can blow up street signs, as we saw in this tutorial. Next week, I'll be talking about my new um, Drawing Skulls tutorial DVD, and it uh, should be a lot of fun. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.